Welcome. Today, I'm gonna try and throw the biggest bow that I have ever made. This shallow bow is the biggest I made so far. I think it's about 45 centimeters, something like that. And I think it came out beautiful with the combination of blue and white glaze and the oxides that are splashed on. I have a couple of videos about how I do these sorts of uh, combination of glazes. But today I'm gonna try and do something bigger. But why? I mean, <laughs> it's such a big bowl, what are you gonna use it for? Well, this one actually just usually sits on my table with the fruits on it. And I think it looks beautiful. And I think maybe a bigger bowl on a bigger table would be even more beautiful. Anyway, it's an interesting challenge. So um, no matter how I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna try and make it. So before I start working on this new bowl, there's some limitations. Um, I'm not talking about my skills, that's a limit of course as well, but I'm talking about my kiln. Because the size of my kiln, I have a Nevertam uh, 190 liter kiln, it's a nice sort of big kiln, but of course there's a limit. And the width of the kiln is about 59 centimeters, but I also need a couple of centimeters just to have a little space to the, to the heating elements, but also so I can actually lift it <laughs> up and down the kiln. Of course, if I make it, um, let's say I put two centimeters around it, so that's four centimeters, so 55 centimeters, which is about 10 centimeters more than this one, then I won't be able to, um, to place a shelf above it because I won't be able to put any support. So I'll only be able to put this on the top layer. Of course, I can put some, some pots below that, but I will only be able to fire one at a time. So that's sort of my limit. And then, of course, there's my skills. As I never did a bowl that big, I'm not even sure what, how much clay I'm gonna use. Uh, this one, I think I started out with seven kilo or something, seven, eight kilo. Um, and I think I'm actually gonna try and start out with the same. It turned out a little bit on the heavy side, so I think I should be able to, to expand the clay just a little bit more. Um, we'll see. Now, let's go to the workshop. In case you wonder why I look a little bit like Frankenstein, it's not because I'm turning into Frankenstein, but to make a long story short, I had an operation this week. I got a infection some years ago in my facial nerves and it kind of lowered my eyebrow a little bit and it was kind of disturbing the, the eye. So my doctor suggested this uh, operation and I just had it and it went fine. But right now, of course, I look <laughs> terrible. But I hope it will get better and I hope you can live with it that far. Another issue that I didn't mention in the introduction is that for this bowl, I most likely want to uh, trim a foot, so I need to turn it around. And of course, it's gonna be wider than my, uh, my wheel head. So for that purpose, I made this big uh, bed. I have to, of course, remove the splash pan when I work with this, but it doesn't matter because I'm not splashing anything. I'm just using it for trimming. This one is 55 centimeter. So even though I could make my bowl 55 centimeter and still fit it in the kiln, I think I'm gonna aim for 54 maximum because that way I can still turn it around on this and have a little bit of an edge um, to center it. So that's my goal, 54 centimeter. Let's see how far I get. For this bowl, I'm gonna be using a clay that I get from a local supplier. I'm not even sure where they get it from. So if you're not in Denmark, you probably won't be able to get it. It's uh, from a company called Cerama. It's a very beautiful gray clay. And, and that's one of the reasons I like it because some of the clays that I use that are really nice to throw, uh, if it's bare clay, it doesn't look so good when it's just bisque fire and you don't glaze it. But this clay looks really beautiful in itself and also absorbs uh, glazes really well. They look good too. And have rather lots of grog. It's only 20%, but it's up to 0.5 millimeters. So it feels a little bit groggy, which makes it more stable and suitable for a very wide bowl like this. And of course, as always, I'm gonna throw it on a bed because <laughs> moving around a big, um, a big bowl like that is not easy. Besides, I like working on beds all the time. So I, um, when you have to th center this much, and I, I decided on, as I mentioned, 
uh, roughly about eight kilo of clay. Uh, I hope that's going to be enough uh, for my goal. <laughs> um, and when you have to send that much clay, I mean, I can send a 10 kilo, I even send a 20 kilo, but to, um, to make less of a burden on your body and to make it a little easier, I'm going to show you a technique that I sometimes use where you uh, throw um, it piece by piece. So I'm going to throw about you know a third first and then add another third and then add another third. And that's actually a lot easier. Uh, you just have to make sure that when you put the, the, the bolts on top of each other that you don't trap in the air. So that's why I made the button a little combed. Um, so when I slam them down, it's going to press out the air. So let's go ahead with that. So this is just the first one third, maybe a little more than a third of the eight kilo. And I'm going to start out centering that. So I want to start out with quite a wide base uh, for this, um, maybe even a little bit wider than this, I'll see. But before I slam the next piece on, I just want to make sure that it's uh, very smooth and there's no uh, water here to get trapped. So that way, when you slam the next piece on, I'm more likely not to trap any air. So now I'm not going to touch the lower part, because it's already centered, I'm going to be focusing on this top part, which is only a few kilos, so it's relatively easy to, um, to center. So now we centered, well, a little more than two-thirds of it. I think there's only a couple of kilos left, so probably six, seven kilo. And it only took, took minutes, and uh, the last part is going to be easy. But as mentioned, just be sure that uh, you have this cone shape and that it's uh, smooth when you slam it on. And again, I'm only going to be focusing on the top because the bottom is already centered. So I'm just going to cone this top. You just have to watch out when you do this that you don't accidentally trap some air. Um, so it doesn't fold over, but rather just expand. So now we sent it eight kilo of clay. And isn't it amazing how easy it was? I mean, of course, I tried it before, but it's a very easy way. It didn't require that much strength. And you could add on, you know, another two kilo, another five kilo, whatever, and build it up to um, however much you want. And that would be an easy way to send a lot of clay. So now I'm just going to decide on um, how big the base is going to be. And uh, maybe it could be a little wider, I'm not sure. And as always, when you're throwing something big, ah, well, when you're throwing anything really, it's uh, crucial that it's uh, very well centered. But especially if it's big and if it's wide, if there's any wobbling at this stage, it's going to be just worse and worse and worse until the, the pot may collapse. Um, so it's better to spend a little bit of time on making sure that it's perfectly centered before we move on. I think this is, this is pretty good. I would like to keep my, um, my bed as clean as possible. And I try to reuse um, a lot of this slip on my um, bowl. Um, I try not to use too much water. I'm not religious about it, but if you can add, if you can use more slip than water, then you're not weakening the clay as much um, by, by adding too much water. It depends a little bit on um, how you throw. If you throw something really big, like a couple of minutes, you can throw buckets of water on it and it will, won't hurt anything. But if you, it takes more time to make it, and in this case it's probably <laughs> taking a little bit of time to make this, the water is going to weaken the clay. And so I try not to use too much water um, to preserve some stability. Now it's time to open it up. And usually when I open up a clay ball, I use my thumbs. You can use all kinds of techniques. Some use uh, uh, the hand and some use, yeah, I use my thumbs, usually. But for this one, because I'm using this, I'm 
I'm trying to make this shell bowl with a with a with an even curve in the bottom. I will I will use my my the palm of my hand a little more um, for two reasons because it's going to help me create that um, that uh, that curve I want inside, and also I'm going to do a lot of compression on that lower part of the bowl, and that's where I need the most stability. So compressing that will help me um, create it. It takes a little bit of a while to get down there, of course I'm very far from, from the bottom yet. I'm trying to, I mean it will be wider here, I'm trying not to let it go completely loose, I'm trying to control it just a little bit. As always with the bigger um, um, pots in general, I think it's difficult to see how, how thick the bottom is. It's a little too thick, but not that much. I do want a thick uh, bottom. It's going to create some stability and also, as I said, I want to, um, to trim out a foot. When I'm pushing from the inside, I'm also uh, compensating from the outside because if I didn't do that, it would get very wobbly. I'm not too concerned with, um, with the shaving of the inside yet. I will get back to that um, when we get a little bit bigger. I think I may want to make it just a little bit deeper. Using uh, the sponge can help me um, avoid friction without adding um, too much water. But in general, I do prefer to use my, my fingers. I think if you, if you use the sponge too much as a layer between your fingers and the pot, you don't get the feel for the clay. So um, it's just now that I just need to, to um, adjust the shaping of, um, of this. And when I don't need the moist anymore, I'm just gonna take it away because I don't want water to soak into the pot. Um, now I'm just gonna add some water to the outside. So I'm just gonna drip a little bit here. And again, I will just push it in a little bit. Because as you know, it's easier to expand than it is to um, make it smaller. So um, if I make it too big now, it's gonna be very difficult to control. So I will push it in just a little bit. Let's just make sure that the rim is well compressed. You don't want the rim at this stage to become too thin because I have to expand it like four times or something. If it's too thin now, it will be way too thin when we get out there. So I um, want to keep some clay out there. And to make a bowl as wide as I want, um, of course there are different techniques. Um, some potters would go out in an angle right away and then uh, expand it even more, lay it down. Um, I think that's difficult <laughs> uh, because you very easily um, lose control. Um, and so I will try and get a lot more height um, on this before I start um, making it wider. Um, that way, in my experience, um, I, um, I can keep more control of it. I'm going to ease on the pressure when I get to the top. I can always expand that. Now I need a little bit of water. And the most important thing about water is not how much you add, but that you add the same amount all over. Because if there's areas where it's uh, suddenly drier, then your fingers will stick and it will um, rip it out of uh, position. See, I am going just a little bit out, but not as much as um, some potters would do it. I guess we all do it in different ways. The important thing for me now is um, to make sure that I, that I use enough of the clay down here and I still have some 
clay to go. That was much better. I'm going to leave a little bit too much clay down here because I can always trim that. Because if I make such a big bowl, um, too, too thin down here now, uh, I'm going to lose all the strength and then the walls are going to collapse. So I do need to have a little bit too much clay down here. Um, but I think I can still move just a little bit up. Yeah, that was much better. Now we're getting somewhere. And again, I just want to take off um, any excess water on the inside because I don't want to weaken it. If, if I have like a lake of water in there, it will soak into the clay and, and weaken. Um, and and I, I don't want that. One problem I personally often have is that I end up making it too thin here. So it's okay here, okay all the way, but then it gets too thin here before it gets too thick. And that will weaken this part a lot. So I have to be very careful when I, when I um, pull up the clay that I, that I kind of lose the grip when I get to this area. At this point, I, um, I want to start using um, a rib. Or actually, I'm going to use two ribs because I'm going to use one on the inside and one on the outside which I find really, really difficult. <laughs> but it helps um, in many ways because you don't get the throwing uh, lines and also uh, you don't need water. Um, so you can, you can expand and pull and you can get rid of some of this uh, slip. That's just weakening your pot. I also have this rib. One I made myself out of a piece of wood can be helpful at this stage. It looks like I'm pulling up a lot of um, clay, but really it's just a small handful and it's eight kilos of clay, so there will be some leftover scraped off, but um, I'm trying to uh, leave most of it <laughs> in the pot. One thing that's important when you are trying to make really big pots is, at least if you are rather unexperienced <laughs> like me, it is to um, give yourself some time. Uh, you can actually keep throwing on a pot like this for uh, a surprising long time. And um, if you leave it um, like I think I'm going to do now, I'm just going to leave it for a few moments. I'm going to go and drink a cup of coffee. It feels like the clay is sort of um, settling in a way. And then I can go back and I can probably pull out a few more uh, centimeters um, on this. And um, I do want that because it's, um, I'm afraid that unless I get more height, I won't be able to get the width I'm after. Um, right now it looks like a nice flower bowl or something, <laughs> but we can just measure it. And of course now it's far from where we need to go. It's 30. 30 centimeters. So we almost need to double that. Um, let me just see how, how it looks here. So we're going for 54. So it actually needs to get out here. And of course it's going to be much, much lower. That's the whole purpose. But I think I need to pull out at least a few more centimeters to get it out there and not getting it completely flat. So I'll just let it sit here for about a coffee's time, and um, then we'll get back and try and pull out a little more. And I'm actually going to leave it uh, spinning, because there's not much of a draft in this room, but if there is, uh, by having it spinning, it will, it will dry up evenly. And of course, it's not going to dry that much. It's just going to be 20 minutes or something. I do think I need to get a little bit higher, but how much higher? I'll try and see if I can calculate that, because it's about 30 centimeters now. So we need 24 centimeters more. Um, so it needs to be 54, which means it's about 12 centimeters more on each side. So something like this. So, but this size, it would have to come out here. And I think theoretically, this height would be enough um, for it to, um, to be wide enough. But 
I still want to make it uh, just a little bit higher, if I can. So I want to reweight it a little bit, not too much, but I do need a little bit of water to um, to be able to um, to pull it. And now when I when I feel the inside of the ball, it's a little bit on the thick side on this part. Up here, I can maybe pull a little bit, but not too much. And down here, it's actually at the foot, where it's usually a big uh, challenge. It's actually pretty good. So, uh, just a few dry spots here. I want to make sure that my hands don't suddenly um, get grabbed by something uh, too dry. So, this part here, I really need to loosen it up a little bit. So, that was better, but I still think I can take a little. Compress the rim to make sure that it's still even and not wobbly. I think we still got really good shape. It could still be a little more on the middle part here. So, let me just try again and see. I think I may need um, a rip for this, and it could just be any rip, but I think I'm going to use this one. The rip is not only to smoothen, you can also actually pull and move clay with the rip, but do it in a bit more um, even fashion. And also get rid of the, the slip that you have on the side. And as you see, I'm also slowly <laughs> making it wider. Um, so right now we are at 33. So it goes really, really fast because you have such a big circle. So only a little bit is going to be many centimeters. <laughs> so yeah, I think we got it a little more even. It, it pays out to be um, careful and... and um, Try and, and, and even out the walls as much as you can at this stage. So now I'm pushing up and, um, and out. So I'm doing both at the same time now. Not too much because, well, I'll show you in a second. I don't want to, um, to expand too much from, from the below, um, from the lower part. Also, remember when you're getting um, a, a white circle, like this um, and I'm going really slowly on the wheel uh, because if I go too fast I'm gonna throw out um, the, 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 the centric of the, the, uh, the, the pot. Um, it takes a while to get a full circle so if you're moving your hands up too fast uh, you're, you're, you're creating a spiral <laughs> you're not you're not pushing the clay all the way around so give it a bit of time So now I think we are almost wider than the bed itself. Um, yeah, it's 38 centimeters now. So um, <laughs> we're getting closer, but still far from, um, from what I was aiming for. So um, we still have another 16 centimeters to go. So at this point, I will start to um, lay out the top first, and then I will follow in uh, with the with the bottom. Because if if I expand too much at the bottom now, uh, it will get too thin, and there's a tendency that it will collapse. So if I expand on the top first, and then follow down and and um, and even it out, it's typically a more safe way to do it. So. I'm going to uh, support it on the outside and then um, slowly going to expand. Just going to lay down very s smoothly, not too much at a time. And always make sure that the rim is well compressed and then um, Still not wobbling, and as you see, it's turning really, really nice and even. 
And at some point, <laughs> another thing you have to remember, if it gets really white, and in this case it will, uh, you've got to remove your buckets, <laughs> because otherwise you're going to hit them and distort your pot. So now I laid it out um, quite a bit at the top here. And so now we need to follow up on, on, on the lower part, on the inside. So I'll go really slowly. And I don't need any water for this. Um, so I'm just gonna, gonna use my right hand, my strong hand. I'm gonna support on the outside on the top, so don't flare that out too much. And the further down to the bottom you get, the more pressure you can apply, and you need to apply, to push out the clay. And then you get in here and round it off in a nice smooth curve. So, so let's just check the width now. It's uh, 42. So about four centimeters more, it's good. Definitely getting there. I think I'm just gonna move the camera a little bit so you can see what I'm doing on the inside now. So again, I'm gonna hold out here to not disturb it. And then uh, slowly with my rib here, I'm gonna um, follow up on the curve that I created at the top. Take it all the way down to the bottom. And make sure that I get a nice Smooth curve all the way. A bit further here. And I always take on the outside. Now you can see we can actually take it a little further here. I will trim in the foot. As I said, I'm gonna keep you can't see it there, but I'm gonna keep um, still a little bit too much clay here because I'm gonna trim that in. But I like to have the stability uh, now. Um, this point. So um, we still need to lay out the lower part a little bit. Um, but this is tricky and this is where you can weaken it so much that it collapses. But I'm trying not to. Yeah, I think it looks much better now. It's getting more and more <laughs> risky. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to heat it up a little bit underneath. Um, and the lower part to uh, make sure that it's uh, strong enough uh, down here. As I said, uh, usually I would um, lay out the top first and then follow up on the inside. However, one thing that's uh, really difficult with big balls, well, any kind of ball really, is that you very easily get this uh, sort of a bulb here, sort of a shoulder. Um, some call it an amateur shoulder. I think that's sort of insulting because it is really difficult to avoid it. Now I always now I have a good curve. There's no shoulder here. I'm trying to keep it <laughs> that way. But even if you end up with a bit of a shoulder, don't panic because as I've proven in, in previous videos, you can trim the inside, especially on a on a white bulb like this. I'll probably do that on this as well. Um, but in this case, I still want to expand a little bit down here. Now I made it stronger. So I'm going to use the rib and go from um, downside and up. I'm going to apply most pressure on the bottom and then less as I go up. So ease the pressure when you get up here because you can very easily push it out of shape. So now we can push out the top just a little bit more. I think it's looking good so far. <laughs> so let's check it again. Should have grown a little bit. Yeah, 55, no 45. So I think now it's about the si same size as um, the first one I made. So now we just need 10 centimeters more, which is just five centimeters on each side. So um, we need to get it out here. So that's not too bad. I think we can maybe, maybe we can make it. So again, I think I need to push it a little bit down here, not to get that awful shoulder that I don't want. And again, 
if you end up not having a perfect curve, and right now this is pretty close to perfect, you can trim it also on the inside. I do that all the time. This part here needs to be laid down a little bit more. So now we got that lower part really well, and now well, it's difficult to see in that angle now, I want to focus on the inside, but it's um, it's now going a little more straight up at the top here, so I think we can we can work um, work that out a little bit more, which we also need to, um, to get the width we out for, and we need to follow it up here. So we keep a continuous curve all the way into the bowl, if that's what you want. I want that, you know, like like if you put a marble ball here, it would just go boom, 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 and not stop somewhere in the middle. <laughs> That's what I'm aiming for. And look, it's still relatively, you know, round. <laughs> it's not wobbling too much, um, which is good. And I still think we can um, we can lay it down just a little bit. Gonna hold on to the top. And let me just check the boxes here. Yeah. <laughs> the buckets. <laughs> so I don't accidentally destroy my pot on that. Getting closer. I think I will yeah, I think I will heat it up just a little bit more on the outside, just to be sure. Forty-seven. It's only a few centimeters more we need. Forty-nine. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to try it. A little bit more. I'll try again very carefully. I need to um, to pull <laughs> a little more uh, width uh, out of it, and there's a lot of clay here that I could potentially use. But now it's getting really weak. It's now 50. Now we're also getting a little bit of wobbling. Um, I think I need to just let it spin slowly uh, for a little while. Um, again, <laughs> drink some more coffee. Um, because I'm not sure if I can actually um, pull this any further without collapsing it. Because it is, I mean, it's, it's very um, flat here and, and I think as a big risk that um, it may, um, may collapse on me. It is 50 centimeters now, so it is the biggest I ever made. So <laughs> I kind of succeeded, <laughs> but I'm not quite there with the 54 centimeters that I was going for. So I think I need to let it um, just settle a little bit, maybe an hour, or maybe a little more than a cup of coffee. So I can, um, I can build some strength into it. I let it dry overnight, uh, wrapped in plastic. Um, that way we get a sort of a more even dry. Otherwise the rim is going to dry really fast and it's not going to dry down here. So by wrapping it in plastic, it sort of even and salvage a bit. So now it's, um, most of it is on a leather hard stage. Uh, it's very stable. Um, I can't do anything more to it. Uh, it didn't turn out as white as I wanted. And uh, right after I left you, um, <laughs> last part of the video, I almost lost it because the flapping was falling down. And it wasn't even falling down equally, it was falling down more in one side than the other. So what I did to, to save it, and unfortunately I didn't get that on video, is I lifted it here the same time I was heating. And I was slowly pushing and heating. And that way I actually got it up in shape again. And, and if you see now, when it turns around, 
it's actually very even. I mean, there's a little bit of wobbling, but I mean, that's very little for, for a bow like this. So now I'm ready to start uh, doing the final shaving. And as I mentioned before, I like to trim pots like this on the inside. Um, there's plenty of space to do it. The challenge, of course, is that when you, uh, when you um, trim off uh, clay, uh, you don't want that clay to stick. On the outside, it's easy because it's falling away, but here it's falling into the pot. So you need to be more careful and, of course, not uh, smudge it into the pot. Then it's going to look awful. So what I want to do to this pot is that may be difficult to see on video. The curve is actually nice. We don't have a shoulder as such, but as you see, the, the, the curve is a little more steep here and then it flattens out. And that could be okay, but on this part, particular there's a lot of thickness um, so <clears throat> I actually have a lot of uh, uh, option to to either either uh, trim it on the outside to make it a little bit thinner or trim it on the inside and make this curve a little more smooth and I think in this case that's what I'm gonna do I'm not gonna run it too fast um, I want to make sure that I don't make any mistakes I'm gonna hold on really tight to my trimming tool Go slow and take it like step by step. And see, because it's it's sort of leather hard now, I can remove the pieces, but be careful not to smudge it into the pot. So you see, already now we're getting, I don't know if you can see that, but we're getting a much more smooth um, transition from the upper part of the walls to the bottom. And also by doing this, of course, I can smooth out the walls a little bit, make them less um, thick. Um, I mean, this is going to be a heavy pot. It, it's a big pot and you can't have very thin walls for a big bowl like this because it's not going to be strong enough. First, I'm, I'm trying to, um, to get the shape right. I'm not so concerned with, um, with trimming uh, marks. I may leave them because it will be interesting. I may not. I can I can smooth that out later if I want to. But right now, I'm just trying to get the, the curve, the shape, um, exactly the way I want it. Up until now, I've been using a normal trim tool. I used two different ones. Um, and that's fine for doing like the rough uh, shaping. But for big uh, bowls and big surfaces like this, I also use this. This is just a hacksaw blade. This the, the the part where the, the the sawing is, but then you have the flat part, and that's wonderful to um, to trim these uh, big uh, curves because it's easier to um, to make it a, a smooth, continuous uh, curve across a big surface. And of course, this tool is super cheap, <laughs> less than a dollar for for a blade. This is so perfect for making it um, have a, a smooth um, surface. You see, now it's getting, well, it's a little bit difficult to see now that we have all the, all the scrapings here. But as soon as I get rid of them, you will see that it's, um, it's a lot more, um, well, even. <laughs> so now, we even got more little pieces, so it's, it's even more, um, gee, there, I was almost um, smudging this into the surface, and, and I don't want to do that. I can still you know, scrape it off like this, but definitely want to be very, very careful not to push it back into the clay. Of course, when you turn it around, you can get it out, but also it can be helpful if you um, use a dry blower, because these loose parts are gonna dry so much faster than the surface. So by doing that, you're gonna uh, release them from the tension. So what happens is that these little pieces, they dry, and because they dry out, they won't glue to the surface of the pot so easy. So after I dry them this way, um, the surface is still gonna be sticky, but the little pieces are gonna be completely bone dry, 
and they'll be much easier to remove without sticking to the side. And now you can see how all this has turned into bone dry pieces, which is more safe to kind of scrape off without, um, without smudging it into the side of the pot. And you can even use a, a brush, or like a stiff a brush, and go against um, the, 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 the spin of the, of the pot. And that way, if anything kind of stuck to it, you can kind of scrape it off with this and then get down to the bottom. And then you can take a, um, a blade like this, a metal rim, a rip, <laughs> metal rip. Just make sure that um, the curve down here, you want that to be, or at least I want that to be perfectly, um, perfectly round. And again, be careful, you know, to, to, to scrape the side of the pot, but not, you know, push um, the little uh, pieces back into the pot. And now you can hear <laughs> how groggy it is. <laughs> and um, I'm not trying to make this um, surface uh, super smooth, because I'm going to glaze it anyway. And um, so, so it will be smooth by the, by the nature of the glaze, by the way that it melts out. But I like that it's um, got some surface because that m makes my glaze more interesting when it um, when it settles over those little. I'm not trying to get the rest of it out. Um, I'm just uh, using my brush uh, to see that it's um, it have the shape um, that I like and the surface that I like. Um, because this is eventually going to go out when I um, when I turn the pot around, so I just want to make sure that none of it is um, is sticking, because that way when I turn it around it's going to fall out. So that's fine. I think the inside looks exactly how I want it. Now I want to go and trim the outside, and I'm going to do some of the initial trimming before I actually turn it around. I know it can be a little bit, a bit difficult to see down here. It is a little bit dark and it's hidden in here. But of course the foot, I want to trim that in a bit. Um, but also when I um, keep my hand on the inside and my hand on the outside, the top of the wall is even and nice, except there's a little bit of a bob here on the outside. So it's a little bit thicker here. And um, down here, of course, we have a little more. So it's mostly here that I need to, um, to take some of it away. And again, to begin with, I'm not so concerned with having a smooth surface because when we turn it around, we can use a hacksaw blade um, to, to solve that. The main reason I like to do this, having it um, upside up, is because I can have my hands on both sides and feel the thickness of the walls. Once I turn it around, of course, I can't do that. So I think now the walls are pretty even, and of course down here we need to do a lot. Um, I can do a little bit of it now, not that it's necessary, but I can do some of the removal of the foot here. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you can see much of it now, but um, also this is not so important because I'm going to do that. And of course, I can't finish it here uh, from this from this side, but I can remove some of this. Now I think I think we're ready to turn it around. But of course, um, I need to cut it loose. I'm always, you know, um, considering whether to cut it loose now and turn it around, or turn it around and then cut it loose. I think in this case, I'm going to cut it loose now and then turn it around. And in case you can hear something meowing in the background, it's my cat. I think maybe she wants more food. <laughs> they always want more food. So, now it's cut loose. I'm not going to lift it up and turn it around. That's way, way too risky. I'm not going to do that, of course. 
I'm gonna um, put my uh, big bat on top of it, like this, and also I'm gonna position it so it's almost centered, as good as I can do it <laughs> from this side. It's just easier to do it now. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be okay. I will have to adjust it once I turn it around. And now we have to do the dangerous part. First I will have to move uh, the splash pan because of course there won't be room for that once we, um, we turn it around because the bed is, is way too big. And then make sure that the bed is um, loosened. So yeah, it is. And now comes the dangerous and difficult part because I want to hold on to um, to both sides and then turn it around in a flip and not drop it. <laughs> so then two, three, that way. Because if I turn it too slowly, it's gonna glide. I did that once and it ended up on the floor, smashed. And um, so. It's, it's a challenge. If it's too heavy, you can do it to people if you synchronize really well. So now we have it off. And now we just need to put it back on the, on the wheel, which is a challenge because, of course, I can't see the holes. <laughs> so um, I kind of have to use my fingers. And of course, the biggest challenge is finding the first hole. And then um, after I do that, it's easy enough with the second. So, there we go. And now the second is easy enough because that's just a matter of turning it until it hits the hole. So now it's good. And of course, for, for a pot like this, you don't need to put any clay on to uh, secure it because it's heavy and it's going to stay there. So the first thing, of course, is to um, make sure that it's centered. And because I put it pretty good on the plate, it's actually not too bad. I can't, you know, I'm not actually very good at tap centering, but also for a big piece like this, I wouldn't do that anyway. Um, so I'm just using this technique of holding my finger tight. And now I can see it's got too much over to this side, so I have to slowly move it. Still a little bit too much here. That actually looks pretty good now. So now I can do a bit more of the trimming. I have to decide what kind of foot I want. <clears throat> if I want a, a raised foot or if I want it to go flat into um, to uh, the bottom. And um, of course I need to finish the sides. It's a little bit rough now, but it has a nice uh, even thickness. So um, I, think, I think I want to just let it float into the bottom. So I'm, I'm going to take off just a little bit more here. Down here, of course, it's a little more soft. Um, so we've got to be careful not to um, disturb it. Distor disturb it. <laughs> and again, to begin with, I'm not so concerned with any, um, any marks or any... any uh, throwing um, or the trimming rings um, I'm just gonna get the shape and, and the curve right I want it to go in and then smooth up just a little bit because if I continue this uh, shape it would be <laughs> too small in here so now we got like the basic shape of it um, the way that I want it So now we'll go back and just remove some of this trimming. It's all gonna, some of the trimming goes on the floor. Whatever goes on the floor, I throw out because there could be other particles in that that I don't want to uh, reclaim. Um, so I'm trying to get as much of it on my table and in my pocket. Now I'm gonna go back to the, um, to the jigsaw uh, trimming tool because again, I want a smooth um, surface here and, and it's much easier with this because it's so long. I could, of course, um, try and, and use a, I have some 
homemade um, uh, chewing tools too. I could use this. Um, it would serve sort of a, a, a same um, uh, purpose. But again, it's not as long as um, the, the hexol blade. And it's so easy to use. And again, it costs nothing. And you don't even need to make the tool. You just buy it as it is, take it out of the box, and um, it's ready to use. It's so wonderful in, um, in creating these smooth um, smooth surfaces on a, on a big bowl. So now you see, it's getting just much more even. Um, I really, really like this tool. I think I said that, <laughs> but I do. So before I make a final decision on the, on the outside walls, I'm just going to see if I can get some of this. I haven't hit the floor yet, so I can still use it. <laughs> now I'm going to do the foot, and uh, as always, First thing is to make sure that it's still centered, that uh, it's not moving around, so I can have a, 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 a consistent same size foot all the way around, foot rim, um, and it is. The next thing is I want to make sure that uh, it's flat, and that's sort of difficult because if you just put the tool here, it's going to move <laughs> uh, with the clay, and I'm trying to control it and kind of carve uh, an even surface, so I need to Hold my hands very steady to my body and carve through the clay like this. Um, this takes a lot of uh, support um, so the clay doesn't take control. So there we go. Now it's flat. The next thing I do is I mark where I want the, the foot rim. And again, giant that split. Let me say I'll be controlled by the clay. And by making this mark, I can also see if um, if it's not completely centered because that it's easier to see that the the width of the of the foot rim if it's not completely perfect. And this looks actually like it could be. It's a tiny bit that way. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, now it's perfect. It's very easy to see from the top. Um, we look down and see that it's perfectly round. So now that I checked that the foot rim is the right size, uh, I started carving out the middle of it. And I always start out with a small tool and I kind of mark up uh, where I want um, and how deep I want it. Because if I use the corner of a small tool, it doesn't put so much pressure on it and, and it, it tends to be an easier way to carve it out. And then as I go on, I can move on to bigger tools because they do move, move a little more, but it's also um, put a little more pressure on it. So I use it later at the stage. Also, I want to um, create a foot that have a, a like follow the curve of, of the ball. So it's, it's deeper here and a little higher in the middle. You can be in doubt of how deep you can go and you can tap it um, or you can measure it. In this case, I didn't actually measure it before I turned it around. The higher the pitch, the thicker the bottom. And this is still a rather high pitch, so I could go a little bit deeper. On the other hand, I don't want this button to be super thin. So I think I'm just going to take a little more on the sides. I don't want the sides to be much lower than than um, the the outer part of the of the pot. So I think this is this is uh, almost good. I think this is about good. Um, then I want to make sure that the top or the bottom, where, where it sits on the on the table, is uh, completely flat, like this. And now I will show you a trick because the walls are now going all the way down to here. I'm going to glaze it on the outside, but if I put the glaze all the way down to here, there's a risk that it, if it just runs for a millimeter or something, it will stick to my kiln shelves, 
and then of course it will crack all pieces of it. But I still want it to look like it goes all the way down. And a neat trick that I use a lot is to make a 45 um, degree uh, bevel. Like this. It only has to be a few millimeters. I usually do like four or five millimeters. And try and make it as precise as possible. So what this does is that I will only glaze to here. And I will leave this unglazed. So that means even if the glaze runs a millimeter or two millimeter, of course it's a, if it's a very runny glaze, this doesn't work. But if it uh, doesn't run too much, you can uh, leave the glaze here, you can wipe it off, or you can put uh, wax on it. And then when you turn it around, this part is almost vertical. So it will actually look like that uh, the glaze goes all the way down. So it's sort of like a visual trick and a glazing trick, and, and it really, really works well. Oh, like this. And now I just want to smoothen it a bit. Um, this part I want to be smooth because it um, it's going to be the unglazed part of the pot. Um, so it's nice that it's uh, very clean and smooth. Also, I'm going to round off the edges. To begin with, when I was doing pottery, I like these really sharp edges. It looks beautiful, but the problem is they chip off very easily. So I found that that uh, in order to um, to make your your pottery stronger, they need to be just a little bit rounded off, just like that. That's enough. Um, and I want to smooth the inside of the button. I'm not sure yet if I will glaze the inside of the button or not. So I'm going to smooth it just to be sure. As I said, um, to begin with. Um, this, this clay is actually really, really beautiful on its own. So it, it looks good even if it's unglazed. So, um, and even, even though it have a lot of crock in it, it's still, um, as you can see here, now that I'm working it a little bit, you can still smooth it, um, burnish it, I guess, and make it really, really, um, really smooth. So, I think that's it. The only thing <clears throat> that I need to do now is to um, add my maker's mark. And uh, I know that I've said this uh, many times before, but uh, these ones I have made in uh, Ukraine uh, by a woman called Lina, and uh, it's wonderful. They're very strong, they're very deep, they're very thin, and they last forever. It's stainless steel. And it wasn't actually uh, very expensive, so I highly recommend that you use her service. I will make a link to her Etsy shop. And if you're in Europe, uh, she have, or at least she used to have, a free delivery, so it's no-brainer. And um, I'm going to stamp this um, on the inside. And be careful not to push too hard, because then you will create a bulb <laughs> on the inside of the bowl. So just going to wiggle it around like that. Now, I have my mark. So that's it. I finished the bowl. I sort of failed in a way because I didn't get to 54 centimeter. I got to almost 50 centimeter. But I kind of succeeded in a way that uh, it's a beautiful bowl. I like it. And also, it's the biggest one that I ever did. So um, I, I think it's a success. And I'll just make another one. But what did I learn from this? And why didn't it turn out as big as I wanted? Well, one factor is, of course, the amount of clay that I was using. <clears throat> I used uh, seven, eight kilo. Probably need to use a little bit more, at least I do, in order to, um, to throw a, a ball that is um, 54 centimeter. The other thing is that I think I miscalculated the, the base as you see, it's actually a rather uh, a, a slim uh, base, and I think I need to make the base bigger. Because if the base is bigger, the walls are not going to hang out so much, because that's the chance. The more the walls are going to hang out, the more risk it is that they're going to collapse, which almost happened to me. So I think the next one, I'm going to use a little more clay, maybe 10 kilo, and I'm going to make a bigger base, and then I think I'm going to make it um, uh, 
254 centimeter. Also, this have a very uh, uh, straight curve out like this. Uh, I think the next one I'll try and make a little more bowy, <laughs> so to speak, and I hope that will um, also make it uh, a little more stable. I don't know for sure, because I never did it at 54 centimeter, but I'm not going to give up. And neither should you, <laughs> because the only way to learn how to do this sort of thing is to try out. And uh, in case you never did a bowl this big, go ahead. It's quite a lot of fun, and the worst thing that can happen is that it uh, it does collapse, and then you can reclaim the clay and uh, try again. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt here, because to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with myself that I didn't make the 54 centimeter that uh, I aimed for. I know, I know, still a record, still the biggest ball that I ever did, but I want to reach 54 centimeters, so uh, I did another one. And... I did it. It is 54 centimeter wide. 54 centimeters. And what did I do? I um, made it with a little more clay. So 10 kilos I expected I needed for this. Um, I made a wider um, base. So um, I didn't have to make the walls as hanging as much. And then I just threw it in a different way, a little more aggressive and uh, I didn't have the video on, so could focus entirely on just throwing. So now I'm happy. Just a few last minute comments. Now that my bowl have almost dried, you can see that it is almost bone dry on the rim. It's a little less dry down here, of course. It have actually shrinked a lot. <laughs> it's now only about 50 centimeter wide. And remember, <laughs> it was 54 when I threw it. So what happened? Well, one thing, of course, clay do shrink when it dry. But this clay doesn't shrink that much uh, when it's only dried this much. It will shrink a little more when we bisque fire it and glaze fire it. So what happens to big bowls and shallow bowls like this is that when you dry them upside up, the walls sort of goes up. They dry up like this. So. I assume that the majority, I can also see it a little bit on the shape, it was a little more shallow when I made it, and now it's actually rised up a little bit. It actually did something good for the shape. <laughs> I think the shape actually looks better now than when I was throwing it. But then again, I have to keep this into consideration when I, um, when I make it. Because I did want something that ended up being 54 centimeter wide when it's done. So in that case, I would either have to throw it a lot bigger, so maybe go for 60 centimeter, and then let it raise up a little bit when it when it dries. That should you know get closer to the 54 that I wanted. Or I should try and dry it with the bottom up or upside down. That should also limit how much it, it it moves up because then of course it can't move up like that. So it depends a little bit of how you dry it. Um, so maybe uh, next time I will try either making it big, bigger which I think is what I will do, make it bigger and let it be very shallow and then let it rise up just a little bit when it dries and hopefully I'll end up with something that's closer to my goal of 54, 55 centimeter. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did, please subscribe and uh, share and write a comment if you have anything to say. I welcome all kinds of comments, good ideas, bad comments are welcome too <laughs> if you didn't like what I did. Anyway. I will have a new video um, next Sunday, as you probably know by now, I have a long video, a full video, uh, every Sunday. Usually I premiere it about 5 uh, p.m. Central European time. And um, in between that, I'm probably going to have some shorts and some shorter tips videos. But every Sunday, you can be sure there's a video. So um, I hope to see you soon again and have a great day.